This is Aaron, this is the Lone Star Drift Channel. We're about to teach you how to tandem, so I couldn't afford in the budget to actually go drift and to show you, so we're gonna use pre-recorded footage. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's learn how to tandem. First off, we're gonna start off by watching a video of my helmet cam from an event, and we're basically just gonna break down what's going on in this thing. So, first of all, let's look. <laughs> So you'll notice basically what's going on is I'm having fun driving with friends and I'm following them. So I need to make sure that I have friends that aren't going to spin out in front of me, that I'm not going to run into too badly, and that we're not going to total the cars because we want to be able to tandem as much as possible and get good as possible. And we need to be gentle on things. So a little bit of rubbing isn't too bad, but I don't just want to slam into them. This means that I have to be very good at both accelerating and decelerating the car on point, will, whatever you want to say, um, very quickly. I need to be able to modulate the amount of angle I have while doing this, and I need to be able to do it all fluidly, really, really fast, without fighting the car. So it's really important that I have a car that's set up well, that I can sit in easily, see out of well, see over the steering wheel, reach the e-brake, reach the steering wheel, reach the gas pedals, all this kind of stuff. That seems really simple, but I see so many people that lack that kind of stuff in drift cars, it's crazy. And then we need to make sure all of our safety gear is up on point. We need to make sure we have door bars in the cars so that if we hit each other, we don't die and stuff like that. And then, basically, this just comes down to learning timing for transitions, when to enter, how to enter, deciding if we're going to e accelerate or decelerate on entry, how much gas we're going to use, how much brake, everything else. Everything is a sliding scale. Everything is adjustable that we do. So let's start looking at this and breaking it down part by part. So first thing you'll notice here is that I drove up next to the lead car as closely as possible for entry. That meant that I was going to be as close as possible in tandem without having to close a gap or distance after entry. So that's a great way to guarantee that you're going to be close throughout the course if you start close. Then the next thing I need to decide is if I want to accelerate or decelerate on entry. And because I'm so close to the other driver, and because he's about to slow down as soon as he enters on this very small track, I know I'm going to need to slow down. So with that very manly arm in that picture, I'm going to grab that e-brake handle. I'm going to pull back on it. That's going to make the car enter along with my hand movement. I'm going to gain angle to match the lead driver, get as close as possible, and then depending on whether or not I'm going to hit him or not, because I'm going too fast, I am going to then need to use a little bit of foot brake. So I'll be modulating the foot brake at the same time as the e-brake to add angle or adjust my angle and slow down to get as close to him as possible and match his angle. And if I am going to hit him, again, I'm going to try and decelerate the car as smoothly as possible so that I don't just come to a stop and then he drives off. I want to match his speed and I want to match his angle. And if I think that I'm not going to be able to keep up with him and he's going to accelerate away too quickly, I'm going to try and use an accelerating technique from here. So I, I'm going to decelerate using an e-brake, some foot brake, match his speed and everything, and then chase him down. So let's keep going. So 
So you'll notice that I made a bunch of small corrections after entry. I made a couple e-brakes and then I got back on the gas and then I e-braked kind of back and forth trying to modulate my speed next to the other driver. And then I had to transition at the exact same time as him. And then I jump in on him to try and then get close after the transition because I know that that's my best time on track to get close because after entry, I have to be careful because he could be sketchy and spin on entry. That's the most dangerous point on track. So that's not my closest point. I then have to let him transition. So I'm going to let him transition. And then after he transitions, that's the best time for me to dive in and get as close as possible. And if I do a good job at that point, I know that after that transition, I can jump in, I can plant myself, and I'm going to have a good couple seconds to get really close to him. And um, I need to know where the limits of my car are because I don't just want to hit him here. I want to close it down to maybe a foot or less and just stay right on him. And then I'm going to need to probably modulate a little bit of foot brake while on the gas to get close and then stay the exact distance I want, modulating the foot brake to do that. And it should also be noted that I can't really run more angle than him or anything else like that. Um, I always hear people talk about how, oh, I was behind him. I was driving faster than him. I entered, you know, bigger or earlier or with more angle, blah, 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 all this other stuff. Ideally, when you're tandeming, you are going to be so close that you will be going the exact same speed as them and the exact same angle. So there's never really going to be a chance if you're doing really well and tandeming really close to have more speed or angle than the lead car because you'd hit them. There'd be no room to go. So just remember that. You are mimicking them. You are not beating them in the speed or amount of angle from behind. It's not possible. That doesn't happen. <laughs> This is kind of a cool example of the lead car gets away from me down the straight a little bit. So I need to adjust dynamically as fast as possible to a different entry style, which you saw me before e-braking. But now because I have to close a gap, I need to use an accelerating technique for entry. So I clutch kick in, I start to close up, close up on Dwayne, and then I immediately need to go to e-brake to slow myself back down. So I'm using multiple techniques in rapid succession to modulate my speed and get as close as possible for tandem. <laughs> This is kind of funny. Mid-drift, Dwayne hits his door and invites me to come put a tire mark on it. So in mid-corner, I have less than two seconds from the time he invites me to go tap his door to get it done without smashing his car. So that means I was probably left foot braking a little bit, holding the car back right here. I then get off the left foot brake. I grip up the car a tiny bit, and I try to close a gap of just a couple feet gently to press a tire mark into his car all without having really any time to think about it whatsoever and to get up there and do it without bending my tie rod. So I have to be very gentle when I do this. So you cannot just scream up and hit them. It's a pretty controlled movement. Um, so anyways, it's just kind of funny and you have to make the decision and then implement it and get done with it really fast. <laughs> Here's one of the differences with uh, demo or practice tandem versus competition tandem. When you're practicing and having fun with your friends, you always need to leave room to bail out just in case there's a problem. So even though I am really close on entry, we're making 100 laps during this day. And if something goes wrong, which of course it will, I always have to have room to bail out. So this is a great example of how you bail out when you're really close to someone and you, you know, have to have room to bail out. You have to do something. 
So I match the amount of angle he has on entry, and as he over rotates, I can see something's wrong because probably his tires are dead. So then I match the amount of rotation he has, and I know I'm gonna like spin out on purpose at a certain rate and get around his car. So I'm working the foot brake, I'm working the e-brake, I'm watching him, and I'm making sure I don't hit him. Now this is different than competition drifting, where in competition, you are just balls to the wall doing everything you can to plow into this guy, basically, um, and you normally are not gonna leave room. So even though we look like we're really close on entry here, we still have room to bail because this is not a very fast track where again, this is just a demo track that we're doing, doing ride alongs and stuff for the crowd. So just keep that in mind. You always have to have room to bail out. So even if it looks like we're close, there is still room to bail out. Please pay attention to what happens right after this transition. This is something that is unique to practice and demo driving, which does not really happen in competition driving because there's a rule format and everything. But Dwayne in the yellow Cressida is going to go wide on the correct line for this next corner. I am going to dive in a bit shallow so I can keep up and get close as possible so everybody enjoys the run that's watching and also riding in the cars. And I am going to shallow up on track, take a less than desirable line, so I can purposely get as close as possible. And Dwayne is going to stay off of the inside clipping point so that I can do this while being smooth and not running me off track if, say, we had a barrel or a cone or a wall or something else there. So this is specifically to entertain the crowd and have the best lap possible for everyone. And it's kind of just a little cheater trick. Please note right here we have at least four cars on track with at least three in front of me. I need to make sure I'm comfortable with all the cars on track that are drifting with us. I need to make sure I know what order we're in. I need to make sure I keep an eye on everyone equally in front of me at all times if possible. So Robert Turnbow in the gray or the brownish Cressida in front of me and then Dwayne Ramsey in the yellow one, and then Fielding Shredder in the purple one in front of me, I need to make sure none of them are about to spin. I need to make sure none of them are about to wreck into each other, doing something weird, or leading us off track, or whatever could happen that's bad. I need to maintain visual contact with all of them, and have good, complete trust in all of them. It is my responsibility for my car and my passenger and myself and my body to make sure we don't do anything stupid and die because those guys are never going to pay for my car if we wreck. Make sure you understand that. <laughs> Welcome to how I learned a tandem. I watch guys like Nakamura, which are on small practice tracks that I can really pay attention to where they're drifting with the other driver instead of against them. I don't really watch Formula D or D1 comps or anything to learn how to tandem. I watch more of a grassroots vibe um, drivers just because it's easier to see what they're doing without fighting thousand horsepower cars and all that jazz. So here we can clearly see Nakamura is trying to maintain angle speed and everything to match the car in front of him and each time he gets a little bit too close you can see him slow down a little bit when he gets too far back you can see him surge and then try and accelerate and catch up to the guy and it's a great example of how he maintains angle and speed and everything else in relation to the car in front of him so we're going to start off very simple to see that <laughs> Now 
Notice Nakamura patiently waits for the other driver to finish his entry, get his car into a little bit of sideways movement before Nakamura does. There's no way the the following driver can really enter earlier than the lead driver and expect to have a clean run because he doesn't know how the lead driver is going to snap to angle and all this other stuff unless he just drives a ton with that driver and knows exactly what he's going to do. Also note, he's about to make contact with the other car, but because he does so at the exact same amount of angle that the other car has, and also with a very low closing speed, there's no real damage to the cars. Possibly tie rods, but I don't think it damages anything. So just make sure you do not hit them and T-bone them or hit them with way too much closing speed or anything like that. At this point, you can see Nakamura is getting excited as hell and banging the shit out of the door of the other car. So just make sure you know the guy and the other car if you're doing this because he's doing a lot of little tiny dents and dings and damage to the other car and tire marks up and down, which looks amazing if you are a missile car driver that just is out there banging up and having fun. But if this is your daily driver or something like that, the other guy is probably going to stab you in the face. <laughs> Let's move on to Mehan. Uh, we're looking at Mehan and Nakamura and some other drivers specifically to look at timing. Timing is more important than building a crazy car in tandem. If you build a, like most Pro-Am driver and FD drivers, build the craziest car possible so they can run the other car down with tons of grip and everything else and just obliterate them. Well, that does work, but there will always be someone faster than you. There will always be someone with more money than you. There will always be someone better than you. So it is really important to learn how to time things perfectly because timing is literally the most important thing in tandem to get good at. Timing is just so important. So what we're going to watch here is the cars and how they ta like time entries and more specifically transitions. <laughs> Also note, someone had an argument with me the other day that the following car should be going faster than the lead car and should have more angle than the lead car. I was teaching one of my little teaching sessions and someone had a legitimate argument with me and they would not believe me. So please note, Nakamura starts his entry right after and like throws to full angle right as, but a split second after the other car gets to him and then just basically mirrors exactly what he does and removes all the space between the cars. That is what looks absolutely amazing about this track because the track is low enough speed that they can do that. Right here, about 10 years ago, the first time I got close in tandem, I got close to the other car. I was right up on his door like this. It wasn't as beautiful or anything 10 years ago, but it felt like this. Um, and then I go, whoa, what the hell am I supposed to do now? And do I just like let the guy transition and hit me? Do I slow down? What, like, what do I do? And it used to be everyone would get close like this, and then they would hang themselves because they'd have nowhere to go after this. So... You need to watch exactly how Nakamura is so close, tran like backs off, transitions, and then shoots back in. That is an amazing skill and requires you to know the timing of everything so well. And remember, you're potentially blocking the lead car's line. So if you don't move out of the way, he has to choose to either hit you as he transitions or he's just going to fly off track or something. But you are 
definitely in the way right here. Watch what's about to happen. The following car is going to transition slightly before the lead car, which is going to set him up really good for the next corner. <laughs> Please note right here how incredibly clean this orange car is. That means these cars are getting that close to the walls, that close to each other. Nakamura is paying attention and not destroying the orange car on purpose. So he has to keep his distance if he wants to be allowed to like keep driving with this guy probably. So the orange car looks amazing, gets this close all the time, and is not destroying his car. That takes so much talent and ability. It's amazing. <laughs> What happened right there is the orange car was almost about to spin. He kind of did a knuckle save and had a lot of angle. But with Nakamura in the back, Nakamura was matching everything he did and was doing so well. And then he kind of purposefully spun out and over rotated the car around the back of the S13 to slow himself down more and more and make it around the car because he probably didn't have time to slow down properly. Um, so that was kind of a bailout technique. So again, Nakamura left himself plenty of space to bail out even though he was only inches away, which just means he has really fast reflexes for this, has driven the track an enormous amount of times, and whatever. Also note that Nakamura's car in this video, I believe, is just a T25 SR with stock injectors and all that stuff, and he's doing all this. So this is all about amazing uh, timing, having a small track that doesn't need tons of horsepower and everything else, decelerating through the track, and having everything set up well to drift. <laughs> This is next level. Everyone has to figure out and make sure they have enough room to transition. And as you add more cars, the timing becomes more and more important because if anyone transitions at the wrong like time, you just hit the guy. Notice the middle car screw up his timing and hit the lead car and screw them both up at this point. This is a great example of demo driving. This is demo tandem. The point is to be in front of a crowd and look as good as possible without doing 
any damage whatsoever to the cars because obviously both of these cars would be very expensive to fix which means both drivers are highly skilled they know what they're doing the lead lamborghini is going to go a little bit wide on track at, like points it can so that the lfa in the back can get as close as possible safely without destroying his car so you'll see the lfa taking a little bit more of a modified line which is more inside the lamborghini on purpose even though that probably wouldn't be judged very well in competition drifting. So he's doing this specifically to be as close as possible and look rad for tandem and for the crowd. We're watching this now to give you an idea of competition driving and how you are not going to be giving yourself much room to bail and about how the importance of timing is so incredibly critical. Both of these drivers are so good. Both of their cars are so good. But there was a missed timing um, while driving. And you will see that missed timing is so destructive when you get it wrong. So imagine Nakamura getting stuff wrong in those previous runs we watched. This has much, minor, much higher consequences because of the high speeds and because how aggressive the drivers are being with no room to give up or bail out. これでいいんでしょ両者ギリギリのバトル。これギリギリだね。あの、だから我々もですね、車検でかなり厳しくですね、その安全面に関しましてもですね、サイドバー含めた、そしてロールバー、ロールケージのですね、取り付け方法まで含めてかなり許さくずっとここ数年やってきまして、しかし本当にサ
part of teaching and everything online, so I figured this was something unique. Um, thanks. Please subscribe to the Lone Star Drift channel if you like it, and see you later. Bye.